Hey, what's up? This is Jim again from Mooker.com over Unity Forum. If you don't believe in free energy is possible, this video is not for you. For those who think it might be possible, I want to explain and show some demonstrations in this video of where it could come from and how I think electricity, especially induction, actually works. Where it is creating free energy, except harnessing it is it is the hard part okay this is the first circuit we're going to show on a bench here's an ac power supply as the one source okay we're going to rectify it into direct current pulses all one polarity which here's the positive lead direct current coming out now remember bridge rectifier has diodes in here so current can't flow back into the positive it only flows one way out okay when uh, alternating current pulses are coming out they have a choice they could go into this diode, but they're not going to go there because they're blocked. So they're forced, these currents. They go up through a resistor first. We're going to do a resistor. At that point, there's a split. Okay, This current is going to go left because it needs to return to the source. It needs to complete the circuit. If it goes right, it goes through the current meter, through the diode, and back to... The positive where a diode's blocking it. There's no completed sword. There's no completed path there. So the current coming out of this AC supply must come out this red, go up here, through the resistor, back through the blue, back through the diodes, and into the other side of the supply. So that's going to be the first test we're going to do, and I'm going to show you the results with the current meter. You will see zero current flowing through the meter with this con configuration. So I'm going to set it up and get that part going now. Okay, very basic setup. I said alternating current before. I meant direct current because it's direct current pulses. We have a variac putting out alternating current, two polarities. It's rectified, okay, into single polarity pulses, okay? Our positive line comes out into one side of a resistor, goes through the resistor, and back to the diode. That's the completed circuit. On the other side, we have... Uh, a red lead coming out of the negative side of the resistor, going through a direct current set amperage multimeter, okay? Direct current because it's single polarity pulses, right? It's gonna go through the multimeter and come back into a diode that only allows it to go this way. So the power supply cannot send power going into the diode this way. The anode is on this side, okay? So we're going to turn this up to 50 volts and let this thing cook. Okay, here's the meter. Okay, we're about at 50 volts. Nothing. And this thing, oh, it's getting hot already. Nothing going through there. We'll turn it up a little more. Yeah, I hear it buzzing away. Yeah, now it's piping. No currents going through the meter. Nothing flows. Ooh, it's starting to smell. Okay, good amount of current going through there. And as you saw, the multimeter stayed at zero. No current passes through there. Okay, that's number one. Next, we're going to go back to the computer and explain the next part and show you a little different results. Okay, back to the computer. Next, we're going to do the same setup, exact same, except we're going to replace the resistor with the transformer. Okay, the secondary of the transformer is going to be on load. So there's going to be the resistor on the output of the transformer. So we know we're getting power through that resistor. We're taking power out of the circuit. Okay, in this situation, now this is going to be hard to explain and you might not understand this. In this situation, Power is being created, not transformed, transformed and created. So it's called mutual induction because whatever magnetic field induces the secondary, the current in the secondary also produces a magnetic field that reinduces re the primary. Okay, so there's a two way mutual connection between these. <clears throat> now, this primary coil is a load per se because current's going through it in the first circuit but now this coil gets induced from the secondary and current enters the primary circuit
from the secondary. So this coil now becomes an AC source or a power source. Now you have a circuit with two sources. Now the current that is generated from the mutual induction of this coil, in this coil, when it travels, it has two paths now. It could complete its path like this and get back to the coil because the diode's the right way and current will flow through the meter or it could go the usual way back through the negative terminal of the AC supply and back out to positive and back to the coil. Now it has two paths. So the original input AC only has one path this way like we just saw with the resistor. But the second source, which is going to be from the mutual induction, has two options. It could go through the usual way, through the AC supply and back to the coil, or it could go this way, through a current meter and back to the coil. So we're going to do this test and we're going to watch the current meter. Now, I'm going to give it away. You're going to see current flowing through the current meter because it works. Now the issue is, in this configuration, without um, remediation, uh, this way has absolutely no resistance because it's uh, all the voltage on this side is at zero and it goes right into the negative side of the source, which is extremely negative. And then it comes back out and goes through the right way. If it goes this way, it's okay at first, but now, after it goes through this diode, it has impedance from the positive current coming this way and this current going this way, trying to get back. So it doesn't prefer this way because you have more blockages in the path. It prefers this way. But nonetheless, we could get some of this current, the mutual induced current from the second source to go this way. So I'm going to demonstrate this on a video now. Okay, this one's a little sloppier because we have more going on, but the variac, the bridge rectifier, positive comes out to the red wire, which goes into the primary of the transformer. Okay, out of the black wire out of the transformer into an alligator clip that goes back to the negative of the bridge rectifier, direct current, pretty simple. Okay, now the same thing, the multimeter leads, the red one's attached to the negative of the transformer, okay, the negative of the bridge rectifier, and this one's attached to, the negative's attached to the diode that goes to the positive. So the exact same setup as before that I just showed. The secondary of the transformer is on load. Here's the multimeter measuring direct current from the negative of the transformer or from the negative of the bridge rectifier back to the input of the diode which goes this way so let's turn it on try to bring it up to 50 volts again let's see okay 40 40 I don't think I could get it up to 50 volts. Yeah, I can. 44. Okay. I'm under 50 volts, like 45 volts or so. I don't want to pump this up too much. Anyway, as you see, we're going into there. And now look, we have current going through the multimeter. Where is this current coming from? It's not coming from here. Because as we saw away with the resistor, it doesn't have a path. But there's current going through it. And I could light LEDs with it. I could fill caps. It's real current going through that. Where is that coming from? I just showed you in the picture tutorial. Now watch. I'm going to start to turn down the power. I'm turning the variac down slowly. And the power is starting to vanish. And it's off. Okay, so let's wrap this up with this horrible drawing. Here's your AC supply, just feeding a regular transformer. Alternating current, you plug a transformer into the wall outlet. It puts alternating current into the primary coil, okay? A completed circuit, right? 
when you collect, connect your load onto the secondary, it creates alternating current in the secondary, which makes a magnetic field in the secondary. The secondary mutually inducts back to the primary in exact proportion. That's why the amperage goes up proportionally of your input to the load that you pull out. Because whatever you're pulling out, it's making that much of a magnetic field that induces the primary exactly that much and raises your input because that extra power, this becomes a battery. The, second, the primary becomes a second source. And the second source always flows in the direction where it raises your current with the current coming out. So that raising of current in your primary supply is not necessarily because it's drawing more. It's because more is being pushed through it. Okay. So there should be, and I know there is ways, like I just showed something very small, but there is more optimal ways to take this um, reciprocal, not magnetic field, but reciprocal current, and instead of letting it go through the supply or through the source, thus increasing your amperage, reroute that current somehow and use that reciprocal instead of allowing it to hurt you or to raise your input. Then, in theory, there should be more energy to harvest than the energy input into the circuit. Join the forum.